Hi there, uh, Cesar here. So, in the previous video, we did some refactor of uh, well, the graph basically. Uh, we already have a very simple graph representation. We have, let me take a look here, we have a graph representation, we have ports, and we have a very simple uh, add node, uh, and they're like a mini. API so it's gonna clean the way we can implement stuff like adding a node it's, it's pretty simple it's 11 lines so that's kind of cool we also have our own logger so we can print stuff without with different levels of severity verbosity so that's cool and we also have our unit test so we can run this test and be sure that whatever we change, it's not breaking anything. So that's kind of cool. So in this video, oh, let me set this counter. Okay. So in this video, we are going to uh, implement the evaluation of a node first. So right now, we're being super explicit about evaluation. So for example, here in test at node, uh, you can see how we call evaluation and same all over the place, right? So we're calling there and we're doing that here and we're doing that here. So we're being super explicit and the graph is basically not doing much. Uh, that's good. That's a good feature, like being able to evaluate a node, forced evaluation, but we shouldn't be triggering this by ourselves. The idea is that the graph uh, understand all these dependencies and it can evaluate the node when it makes sense to the model. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Um, so there are two ways to think about this. There is a push model and there's a pull model. So we'll start with a push model and what push means is that we push data through the graph and those inputs receiving the data in each node trigger the evaluation and that's go out connected to another node and that node receive the value and if there is a new value that trigger the evaluation that's basically the data pushing data it's in charge of triggering the graph until you get an answer, a final destination. Uh, and you can see this model all over the place. It's, it's very common in servers, web servers. So let's say YouTube, when I, I upload this video there, uh, I send my data, it gets to a server, I guess, in which uh, I upload and they send it to the encoding, uh, Oh, you also have to include like a description. So that's probably go to another node. And all these nodes are kind of connected. So when I finish encoding, maybe I get an URL for that video. And, and there's entire graph like reacting to the inputs. So that's a push model. So yeah, let's, let's do it. Uh, in order to make it simple, I will complete out those tests. I don't want to run everything at once because it will be a hell. <laughs> uh, so we have two simple tests uh, and we will implement this at a node level first. So connection are a bit tricky. Uh, so we will do that in the next video. So there you go. Uh, the first thing is looks like well, right now we have a concept of a port and we're using that for input and output port but looks like they're not the same right inputs have some qualities that output port doesn't so we are going to split this so let's just do that and we'll create a new class called input port and the base class will be port and that's pretty much it for now yeah so we have our new input port and we have to use this. So in the node, in the add input port, 
we are going to instantiate an input port now. So if we run test, oh, it's good. Awesome. Next step is, looks like when we set the value, something has to happen. Like the node has to evaluate. But value is an attribute right now. It's not a function, it's not a method. So it looks like we have to upgrade this to a property uh, so we can trigger something from there. So I will do just that. So value will be now underscore value and we will establish our property here. So property uh, together will be equal to a lambda. So the first argument is the instance and we'll say instance dot get value. We'll call that. For the setter, we'll use another lambda. I know that the first argument is the instance, the second is the value. Uh, this we'll call our call x dot set value. And we pass the value there. And now we need to implement those get value and set value so let's do it here so uh, get value first okay and we can delete the argument um, yeah and here we'll say return self dot underscore value super simple the setter same stuff set value value self dot underscore value will be equal to value um, so at this stage if we run the test oh it's good we have exactly the same behavior so just one really quick point there are many ways to define properties uh, you can do it through decorators it's very handy you can do it using functions inside the functions that's really good too but i prefer this method this way to do it because in the subclass i will be able to override just together of this or the setter if you do it uh, as a property or as a function containing two function uh, you you have to override the entire thing so for me this is simple it's better for uh, subclasses and when you're typing a class while you're coding a class it's very good to think about the subclasses and not just your actual your, your current problem right so that's it uh, so now okay we're back there the runner the tests are running are passing all good so the input port we basically have to well after that uh, before that uh, so the input port, when we set a value, we want to evaluate the node. Basically, that's it. So we can like delete this line there. The node is not being evaluated. So looks like it's important for ports to know uh, which nodes they belong to. So we are going to do a self dot owner introduce a new attribute that will be known by default. And we will set that every time we add an input or an output. So port that owner will be equal to self. So it it knows to know which node it belongs to. And now it's pretty simple. We just need to implement here override set value. So set value value. I will call supper input port self set value and we pass the value so it's doing whatever the base class is doing plus self dot owner dot evaluate so we basically evaluate the node so if we run the test now everything's good we have exactly the same behavior and we are not evaluating the node explicitly on our test anymore. 
that's pretty much it for this video so let uh, yeah let's let's save this uh, so if I do a git status you will see that there's change uh, so instead of keep working in the master branch uh, and git that is the, the, the master branch uh, on branch master we are going to create a branch for the push uh, graph uh, so that way we can switch to master uh, because we're, pro we're likely to break it a little bit at first so just let's do that so git check out a new branch called push and git check in everything and the message will be uh, input port input Port. No, like that. Put implementation. Oh, I don't know. First implementation. Cool. So that's pretty much it. Um, see you in the next one. Bye bye.